All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a foggy, actually a foggy San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined again. Welcome back from Chicago, Molly Sider. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm so excited to be here again. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully the the weather hasn't changed too dramatically in Chicago yet, has it? Um, it's definitely fall, but it's been really warm. I mean, it's yes, I think like the past few days have been in like the high sixties, low seventies, which is pretty warm for Chicago yeah. at this time of year. Yeah, yeah I know, because I was loving you fly into O'Hare or whatever, and you just see all those snow plows lined up on the side of the like hundreds yeah. of snow plows ready no. to go. <laughs> We're not there yet. That'll be like January and February. Yeah, Although yeah. supposedly it's going to be a warm winter. Yeah. I I know it's not good for the for like the world for the earth, but um I I hate the cold, so I'm <laughs> hoping for a warm warm winter. Excellent. So um, Molly is a midlife change coach and the creator and host of the podcast I Am This Age, proving you're never too old to make a significant change. When Molly turned 40, she needed proof that it wasn't too late or too old to find her extraordinary uh, career, love, friendship, sought meaning in it all, found her purpose in life in the process. Now an ICF accredited CPC motivation speaker and podcast host, Molly coaches people in midlife, turning their crisis into meaningful change and helping them to write their next chapter with clarity and confidence. I love it. And we're going to talk about why. Uh, why it's so hard, middle age for for some people. Personally, yeah. I was just saying, I think it went by in a blink. I don't even remember middle age now. <laughs> um, well, good or bad, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there, there's no judgment around it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's just get straight into why why is middle age so difficult for people, and and what is what is it about? Is, do they go in with some like preconceived notions, or is it did it just a lot of things hit them at once? Um, I think it's probably a, like all of the above. I think it's a lot of different reasons. Um, I think a, you know, a big reason why middle age is so hard. Um, one of the many reasons, and especially the people that I work with, mm -hmm. um, are you know, we've been perhaps we've been working towards us um, certain goals for like most of our adult life. Um, maybe we've been, we've had the same job for most of our adult life. You know, um, we've been sort of working towards gaining things like we that we believed or we were told from society you know I'll be happy when I'll be happy mm. when I have you know the job with a certain salary I'll be happy when I have the girl the house the fancy car the vacation like I'll be happy when and oftentimes when we get those things they do make us happy for a moment but that fades away quickly, as I think most of us know, and we're still left with all the same internal stuff that maybe we haven't looked at or dealt with that, you know, is actually making us unhappy. We just have a bigger house mm -hmm. or a nicer car, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think that like when we start to feel those things, like, you know, when we realize like, oh, I've actually gotten all the things that I've wanted, or I've gotten a lot of the things that I've wanted, um, you know, I should, you, you start to feel sort of like I, there's something wrong with me. Like I should be feeling more grateful and you feel lost and sad and confused. And like that so begins that internal struggle mm -hmm. and we begin to fight against our own needs and our own intuition. Um, and you know, that never works. You'll <laughs> never, you'll never win. Um, and I think that's really like the midlife slump or crisis or whatever you want to call it. And, and a, a lot of it, I may, I'm going to get your opinion on this. I think a lot of it is, I mean, you touched on it there is, you know, we may have goals, we may have things that we want to achieve, but we probably very rarely look at the reason why or the purpose or what we're doing, because it, let's face it, you get into maybe you have a family, maybe you have kids to provide for or whatever, whatever it is, and all your focus goes there. And then as they progress or age out, it's, uh, now you're you're left with suddenly what you thought your purpose was doesn't seem to be there anymore because you never really figured it out in the first place. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happens. Um, and also things change and shift, yeah. you know, like we live life and we have experiences and, and um, our 
feelings about the world may change and about ourselves may change. Like, you know, what we thought we wanted at one point might not be what we actually want at mid at mid age or at any other, at some other age, um, you know, things shift and change. It's really important. I think to like, I, you know, when you get to that space where you're like, I feel icky, I feel unfulfilled. I feel like I mm -hmm. want more. And I also feel bad for feeling that way because I look at all these things that I have. I feel, yeah. should feel more grateful. All these things. It's like, you know, those feelings are so it's really important information. Pay attention to that information. Um, it's, you know, it's telling you something. And like I said, like you can't, you're not going to win this battle. <laughs> so you can't cover it up, you know, as you have already proved to yourself um, through, you know, getting whatever, you know, finding whatever you were told was success. Um, you know, what you were told what would make you happy. And now it, you know, you're still feeling this way. Like that's proof. What more proof do you need that, um, you know, just pushing the the goal line further down the road isn't actually the answer. Like listen to your feelings and consider it. And um, yeah. yeah. And I think part of it too is that once upon a time, there was probably more def defined in some way like transitions in life, right? You know, where, yeah. you know, people, they, then they had a job, then they retired at a certain age. Now you have people are living longer. So even middle age, even defining middle age is quite hard now because what is middle age when people are living much longer? It's it's That's it's right. probably bigger than it used to be yeah. or wider than it used to be. And then sometimes, you know, unfortunately, you know, people are maybe having to work longer or stay in work because, uh, you know, because for fi financial overhead or maybe they have kids in college. And that's, you know, I mean, that's ridiculously expensive. I mean, I talked to one person not that long ago came to refer repair the um, the, f the fridge and he basically said that he and his wife had made the decision that they would be working forever because they just had to pay pay for their kids. But they just made the decision that they'll never retire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a real thing. Um, mm -hmm. That is definitely part of it that like you're still, you know, a lot of people are still taking care of their families and mm -hmm. either they still have young children or they have children in college or mm -hmm. um, that's like a legit thing. Mm -hmm. um, and also like knowing that you have to work really hard to um, support you and your family for, you know, what will hopefully be a long life. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of stress. There's like a lot, there's a lot of reasons why midlife is so hard. It's also, you know, there are studies that show that midlifers have like the most struggle and depression of any age bracket mm. and that people are actually happiest in the beginnings of life and later in life or at the end of life, you know, hopefully assuming that you are privileged enough to live a very long life, um, but not too long for you. <laughs> <laughs> enough for me, exactly. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> yeah, but, but it but it is it, it is interesting because, as you said, I mean, when we're younger, you know, we're starting out on our path or whatever, or you know, or some of us don't even remember um, what that was uh, for one reason or another. Uh, and then, and then you get into this middle part and it is, it does feel sometimes like it's um, you're in some kind of limbo, like you're static, you know, as you said, you're living, I think it was James Joyce, right. Or something like living at an arm's length from yourself because you're living for that future. So yeah. when you, when you coach and help people, how do you get people back to being able to be in the moment and like find meaning or make those changes because you know we're really good at always as you said at the beginning pushing things off or living in the future and saying mm -hmm. it's okay just another year of this and another year turns into two years and 10 years and before you know it you you yeah. haven't actually ever addressed any of these things right yeah well that's a really good point and that just made me think of how like a lot of times too um like that couple that you met you know, a lot of it is we're just maintaining, right? Yeah. Like we have to just maintain and you sort of lose a sense of purpose. And when you lose a sense of purpose, I mean, we all know that in order to have a feeling of like value and worth, we need to feel like we have a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe just maintaining is your purpose. And that's enough for some mm -hmm. people. But I think for a lot of people that isn't enough. Um, 
And so to, you know, to, to start to work on this stuff, it's about, um, well, so when I was on here last and we talked yeah. a lot about storytelling and mm -hmm. narratives and stuff. So that's a lot of how I, um, how I work with my clients. So, um, you know, making small changes, it doesn't have to be like big mm -hmm. tangible stuff or it can be for me personally, it was about untangling my internal narratives, my internal struggles around my own sense of worth. Mm -hmm. That has been an enormous form of change and purpose for me. And of course I've made a career out of it now, right. um, but that took a lot of unpacking past narratives and then considering new narratives and really looking at what I liked about myself and what I didn't like about myself, all really, really hard work. And also like really um, uh, um, accessible if you have somebody to help you. But right. another really like wonderful way I think that I've been thinking about a lot lately, um, a, a way of like getting to know yourself and finding some new purposes is really thinking about like trying something new, but allowing yourself to be a beginner. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think we value being a beginner at things like you know, I think a lot of people are, will not try something, you know, even yeah. if it's just like learning how to dance or something, mm -hmm. like we often don't try something new when we don't think we're ever yeah. going to be great at it. Right. And like, what a shame that is. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been like in, ingrained with this story that we have to constantly be like pushing to be the best. Mm -hmm. But I think like if we allow ourselves to just only ever be a beginner at something, um, what a wonderful way to start to really get to know who we are, what we like, and, and like be able to sort of just sit with the real yeah. us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I totally do. Cause I think it's, it's in some way it's, uh, it, it can be quite liberating to, to, as you said, to be a beginner, but, but as, as adults, like we're programmed to think, you know, we reach a certain stage or age and it's like, if I, if I'm not good at this immediately, then I'm not doing it. Right. Because, uh, right. And, and it's a lot of it is ego driven and, and things like that. But, uh, I do think if you, if you, if you do start something, if you do start something as a beginner, it's, it's humbling, but it's also liberating at the same time. If you, if you sort of say, I'm not going to set that expect. I'm for once. I'm not going to set that expectation that I have to be the best out of the gate. I'm just going to let the. I'm just going to try this out and let the journey unfold. Yeah, absolutely. If you know, you can think of sort of that as like the purpose isn't to like necessarily be the best at this yeah. thing I'm going to try, but the purpose is something different. You know, what you know, what could possibly be a different purpose than, oh, I just have to be the best at this mm -hmm. thing. Cause there are a lot of different choices that you can make. Right. I mean, it could just be, I want to, you know, learn about like, just going back to the dance example, like mm -hmm. I want to learn how my body moves differently than, you know, when I'm just walking or sitting or whatever, mm -hmm. or, you know, how it's changed over time. Um, you know, I just want to gather that information. Yeah. Like, um, uh, maybe your purpose is to just learn about new music. You know, yeah. there can be a gazillion different, um, reasons for learning how to dance. It doesn't have to be to become the best dancer. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think one of the things that we have to learn, and this is something that I've, I've learned through, through martial arts, to be honest, uh, is that, uh, you don't compare yourself to the person in front of you, the person to the side, to the side of you, the person behind you, because just like anything else, there's always going to be people who are faster, stronger, more flexible, more, you know, there's always going to be, you could, oh, you could spend your whole time comparing yourself to other people and it'd be miserable. What you need to compare yourself is to, are you improving? Are you getting better? And you'll often find there are things that you do better than some people, but it's not the point. It's, it's the point of, it's the personal journey, right? And and that's why I always recommend people like don't be afraid to start something because I went back to martial arts when my son was three and a half, right? He I started him in martial arts and then the uh, the master at the time persuaded me to start. So I did exactly what you talk about. I went in as a and I had done martial arts before back in Ireland, but I went in as a white belt with all these little toddlers and small kids, I had to do some of my early testing, you know, it was, I was doing it with these little kids and my son and all the parents sitting around. I mean, it was about as embarrassing as it could possibly be, but 
it but it's a it was a wonderful experience and i think that thing about and we live in a comparison culture so i also think it's like you got to stop comparing it's so hard i call it comparisonitis yeah and i definitely have it <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's 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 so hard to let that go i mean we all have egos right mm, sure. um and i talk a lot about like letting your like leaving your ego at the door um you know with whatever you're doing or trying, trying something new, um, and just like showing up the way that you need to show up with like the feelings that you're actually feeling with whatever expression that ends up being on your face. Like, um, you know, I think we also, I've been talking a lot about this lately. Like we also, I think all are just sort of putting a smile on our face and like pretending that everything's fine. Yeah. And a lot of people are not feeling fine, mm -hmm. um, you know, and if you look on social media, like sometimes I'm just like, what is everybody doing on social media? Like everyone's just talking at each other and putting on a smile and like, you know, pushing their hustle and yeah. every, and so, you know, it's, of course, that's where like the height, at least of my comparisonitis comes in. And then I have to remind myself, like everyone is going through their own stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and sometimes I just want to like, just say to everybody like, okay, can you just like all like set aside your ego, put down your hustle and like, just show me whatever like facial expression you're actually feeling mm -hmm. like, like actually reflects how you're feeling right now. And then let's move from there, you know? Um, yeah, it's that, it's that kind of a, a it, it's the it's the authenticity that's missing, and I think that's what people are are secretly craving, but they don't know that that they're craving authenticity in other people, but they may not be be being authentic themselves. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask you about too is the idea of relationships, like them, the people in your life. I think that's a critical thing, particularly as you get older, uh, mm -hmm. maybe as you get into middle age, is that you look at. The people who you, the people in your life, and whether they're serving a, a positive or negative purpose for you, and why. It's like if you have that person who's always, you know, it's negative in your ear. It's always pretty. Instead of blaming them, you have to ask yourself, why? Why? What purpose are they serving for me? Why am I keeping them here? Yes, one hundred percent. Well, first of all, um, all, studies also show that um, the like key or like the the critical ingredient to living a long life is your um your social network mm -hmm. um it's like so incredibly important to have good people that you surround yourself with and that loneliness is really like one of the top you know killers mm -hmm. um and yeah a hundred percent to figuring out like you know, who you want to surround yourself yep. with and why. And also, yes, when you are finding yourself in certain relationships, whether friendships or romantic relationships or what our family, um, you know, when, when you feel like this relationship isn't serving me, I think a lot of times we go and we blame the other person mm -hmm. and you always have to think like, how am I contributing to my situation? Mm -hmm. You know, cause yeah, maybe that person isn't for you or, you know, but like, how are you contributing to it? Because you are not an innocent, like you were there too. Why are you there? You know, why are you, why are you associating with that person? What is it that, that you're getting out of that relationship? What do you need? What do you feel like you're not getting like all that stuff? It's so important to not just yeah, blame yeah. the other person. <laughs> exactly. Because it, it, it could be that you use their negativity in order to avoid doing things because you just go, well, I I tell it I tell it to this person they I'm going to do this and they go oh yeah that, that's rubbish you never do that and you go cool I've just got a good excuse now not to do it yeah that's exactly right yes because there's always a reason I mean there's a, they're they're fulfilling something for you so what is that thing and is it um like can can you can you have can you be fulfilled um, in some other way, or can you heal that part of you that feels like you need to be around this person who really isn't making you feel good ultimately in some other way? So then you can like move on from that relationship that isn't 
really serving you. But first, it really requires you to take a look in the mirror and see how you're contributing to your own situation. And it's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, <hard>. it, <laughs> it is. And 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 like you said, you mentioned like the, the statistics are around uh, depression and mental health issues and that as people get into their, in, in, as people get, get into middle age. Uh, so as we said, it, it is very important to realize that it is a journey or that you are, mm-hmm. that we are evolving all, hopefully, <laughs> rather yeah. than evol- although I'm not so sure nowadays or with not de de evolution, but anyway, uh, hopefully we're evolving and things, are, and that and that it's okay, and it's okay not to have all the answers because that's the other thing too. I think as we get older, sometimes like we think that we're expected to have all the answers, and that's just that's obviously ridiculous. Yes, I was thinking about this recently, mm-hmm. um, uh, as I've been um, struggling a little bit with like a very dear um, friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that there's this idea that we have to, that like at this point we're supposed to be the perfect friend mm-hmm. or the perfect yeah. whatever, um, that we should know everything. And of course that's not true mm-hmm. and we're human and no one's perfect and you know, all the cliches. Um, but it's, you know, this is our life learning journey and everything mm-hmm. we do is, just us i say this all the time we're just gathering information Mm -hmm. and then what we do with that information is up to us right and of course as we get older we have more and more information to sort through um but we're also more knowledgeable and we understand ourselves better in the world like our you know how Mm -hmm. we react to the world better um but no we're never going to be perfect and you know part of I think also being like a mature adult is understanding that and giving yourself some grace and other and also other people some grace. Like yeah. it's okay if you're not perfect at whatever the thing is. You're never going to be. <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, I think we could do it a lot more a lot more grace. Uh, that's for yeah. sure. I think all of us could be a little bit more grace. Uh, uh, graceful in many ways. Uh, and the other thing that just um, I just wanted to mention on that is 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 again i when i see experts right or experts i trust an expert more who will admit when he doesn't when they don't know something right i goes to go back to years and years ago like top top acupuncturist my brother was going to you know it was really one of the best in ireland at the time and it was pretty rare but one of the best and he went and he he's doing his needles and he stuck one in and it like really hurt right and my brother was like, oh and he goes oh wh- wh- why did that hurt and he goes uh the guy goes i don't know actually he goes, oh, I'll just put it in some of hey, that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. And in that moment, you're like, oh, actually, this, you know, and I trust the guy more because instead of coming up with some ridiculous answer, he he actually just he was he was humble enough to say, I don't know that. Therefore, the trust in in that person just went up. Yeah, 100 percent. I think that. um you know, that's how we learn. That's how we that's how we become better, smarter people is being able to um change our minds um to admit when we don't know the answer and to actually say like i don't know that but i'm gonna go figure that out or to to actually say i got that wrong and we have to and i I started to think about this with just before um you started to ask that question too like especially right now with everything that's going on in the world um it's like there's no space for people to like to to gather their own information, to be able to change their mind. There's so much yeah. yelling and there's so much shaming. And when you, sh- we all know, especially if you're a big Brené Brown fan, like, mm-hmm. you know, shaming people is not ever going to um, get yeah. the other person to admit that they are wrong or change mm-hmm. their mind. That's not how, that's not how we work. And that's not how we grow and we learn. We have to create space um, for people to be able to say like, man, I was wrong yeah. about that. And yeah. I'm sorry. And now I'm going to do better. And um, to evolve and change. Yeah. yeah. And, and to be educated. But no, I, I agree with you. That's why I always, uh, yeah, that's why I kind of stopped. Uh, I, I stopped using the next door app because that descended into just a, a, a more localized version of people screaming yeah. at each other. But, but I would say to people is, nobody's if you come if you come to people and say somebody and you say you're stupid everything you think is stupid and it's wrong 
Nobody ever changed anybody's mind no. doing that. Mm -mm. It doesn't work <laughs> it ever. Doesn't work. I mean, think about it. Would would that change your mind? No. No, of course it wouldn't. You'd no. be like, yeah. It immediately puts you on the defense. But that's what people are doing nowadays. They're just shouting at each other and thinking yeah. somehow that's going to have an effect and all you're doing is just releasing nonsense hot air into the universe and there's enough already yeah exactly and you know it's like i get it it what's happening right now is scary and it's sure. uh, like i'm full of emotion believe me mm -hmm. and i'm 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 personally like scared and um yeah. and also very angry and also mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um you know yeah and also like i like have I because I've done all of this work I can recognize like okay I'm getting angry so mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go do a bunch of research yeah my own research so I can actually understand what's happening mm -hmm. and then I can form my own you know opinions from there and um and also like I know that I haven't always gotten it right yeah um especially like what's happening right now like I did not get it right um in in the beginning and um and I still don't understand everything but yeah. Um, there was a, I, I had a lot of like self shame around that, like a lot where I was like, how could I have gotten this so wrong? I thought I was like, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing. And it turns out like, no, I was not doing the right thing. Yeah. And, um, and that was a lot for me to unpack too, and just grapple with and like mm -hmm. give myself the grace to be yeah. able to like admit oh, I was wrong and it's okay. And now I'm space to learn because yeah. the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm we're finished on that, but that's the thing is that that just frustrates me the most is that, yeah, I mean, number one, you can't just take information that's fed to you, right? You need to go and you need to go and do your own research. Please, also, yeah. it's, I, I love, I, I, it drives me crazy. And I did do history in college, but it drives me crazy when people go, oh, I don't like history. Or, I never bother with that. And I'm just thinking you can't, if you, you can't, and, but yet you can pontificate on things that are happening in the world today, but you won't, you, you, you reject even going back and understanding the root causes or whatever, and the different perspectives and all of that. So yeah. it's like, it's like people have gotten to the point where they're so ready to offer their opinion, but it's not based on anything other than some bumper sticker they read. Right. It's emotional. It's just yeah. emotions. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. and it's so easy. And there's a lot of, you know, obviously people are throwing around the, pro the word propaganda, but there is, mm -hmm. it's a lot of um, propaganda and that exists in the world for a very specific reason because it works really yeah. well which Absolutely. we are seeing and, and, and especially today with all the with and especially today with all the tools and everything people have to be able to deep fake things and to you know twist things and present things yeah. in different ways and that's why your antenna yeah. has to be more up rather than than less up but unfortunately we're living in a world where people just want the they just want the sound bite yeah. uh, and if they're and if they're whoever the people they look up to are saying the same thing they're like okay cool i'm on board yeah especially if you don't have if you don't know the history you yeah. know if you haven't actually yeah. done your done the your own research and then you're like well i have followed this person they're like me i respect them they're really smart look mm -hmm. at all the followers that they have they must be right <laughs> so i'm gonna go along and i'm gonna repost their stuff and it's like i've never it's i've it's I've yeah. never seen anything like this before. Exactly. So it's like extra, extra important to first of all, trust your instincts. Because even for me, when I was like hearing all this like rhetoric and I'm like, I don't, that doesn't sound right. Like I, there was always something like that doesn't, mm -hmm. I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like the math isn't adding up for this, yeah. but also I don't really know enough. And um, so, you know, and these are people who I thought were really, really smart or who are really smart people. And um and are like me in terms of their politics and stuff like that. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm, they, they must be right. And so I kind of started to get swept up in that emotion, but then I caught myself and I'm like, let me go figure this out on my own. Let me go read some things <laughs> and have since been really, you know, again, like felt some shame around the fact that I was, that I was able to get sort of swept up in those emotions. Um, but also proud that I was able to catch myself and be, and yeah. also like, admit like i didn't get that right yeah. and but now i'm i'm hey, figuring you, it out the, the it's it's uh the beauty of humility one of the hardest things especially you know, one of the hardest things to learn and the hardest thing is to be humble but some 
it's humility, a little bit more humility. If everybody share, had a little more humility, we'd be the world would be a better place. And I think it's something that we all have to work on. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So listen, thanks again, Molly. It's been great. Uh, Molly's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do remind people about what you do. So I am a midlife change coach, if you can already figure that out. <laughs> um, I also am a speaker and I have my own podcast, which is called I Am This Age. And it is interviews with people who have made big life changes beyond the age of 40. So the tagline is proof that it's never too late and you're never too old. So just mm -hmm. go do that thing you're always talking about. We talk a lot about like the emotions that, you know, about going through change. So um, you can find, oh, should I tell my... Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can find all of my stuff on my website. It's just mollycider.com and you spell my last name with an S instead of a C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can find me on Instagram at molly at this age. Yeah, not to be confused with the cider, the drink, all right? Yeah. Right. Although <laughs> appropriate after spending a very long time in the wine industry. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Molly. Thank you for watching, listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Of course.